the uh, my honourable colleagues' comments, but I believe we're supposed to be debating the amendment uh, that they put forward on the about the uh, Asian Infrastructure Bank, and I'd like relevance on this issue. Thank you. I thank the uh, honourable member for uh, South Shore uh, St. Margaret's uh, for her uh, intervention. Um, uh, admittedly, uh, I, I know that the honourable member it did introduce the, uh, the, the notions of uh, relevance at the opening of his remarks. Um, it did seem, for a moment or two, order. It did seem, for a moment or two, that uh, he was well into describing the measures that would uh, be upcoming uh, for potentially in a private member's uh, question that will be before the House at some point in the future. However, it does fall to the honourable member to incorporate uh, just how those uh, that set of ideas, and I think he was just kind of getting around to that actually when the point of order came, uh, and we'll let him. Uh, We'll let him uh, carry on and, uh, of course, keep those uh, very arguments uh, relevant to the questions before the House. The Honourable Member for Courtney Alberni. Well, well, the intervention couldn't have been more perfect, Mr. Speaker, because we're talking about where the government's not spending their money. In my communities, Mr. Speaker, $500 million in an Asian uh, infrastructure bank instead of infrastructure in a house in Heshquit, in Hot Springs Cove. And I'm not done yet, Mr. Speaker. In my community, and as I traveled through my riding, I, all I heard about was neglect from this government and bad decisions. I went to Tofino. They told me about the lack of investment for marine debris, the lack of investments now, today, for affordable housing. I went to Tyastanis and Essawista, and they talked about in the Tolokwit Nation the lack of commitment from this government to honour their promise to make sure that Indigenous people are their most important relationship and treated like that, Mr. Mm -hmm. Speaker. So we talked about social issues, including elder care, which wasn't in the budget. It's going to Asia instead, addressing the, large, uh, the lack of monitoring and science-based and Indigenous uh, based decision making that they haven't supported, Mr. Speaker. And I went from there to Hitatsu, to a community, uh, uh, sorry, Makawa, in, in the Toquat Nation. And I heard from them that they haven't got support for a community centre. In fact, we had our gathering under a 10 by 10 tent. And I was received by, beautifully by them, despite our neglect as a nation for this uh, community, with a feather, a feather asking us to work with them. In fact, they were looking for transportation support so they could grow their economy, so they could build a nation and be part of this great story, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Speaker. I went to the Ukluleth Nation, and they war welcomed me warmly as well, calling for language revitalization and, again, support for a higher, higher learning economy. All good ideas. All good ideas that we could invest in in Canada. They talked about Parks Canada houses sitting empty in Ukluleth that could be used for housing people when they've got a housing shortage. In fact, those houses are actually going rotten and building mold instead. So this government's neglect is costing us uh, not just uh, money, but infrastructure uh, uh, that's available right now. Yeah. I went from there to the Huayat and met with Chief Dennis, and he talked about the amount of children living in care and the lack of investments from this government. It, it, it's humiliating and embarrassing to hear that the government's concerned about what I'm talking about today and actually calling uh, me out for that when they're investing in Asia instead. You know, I went from there to, uh, to Banfield, and they talked about the lack of investments and support for their institution and how they need more. Mr. Speaker, I travelled to the Alberni Valley, met with Chief Tatouche and the Hupetchisit, and we talked about the need for salmon restoration and EI eligibility for fishers, which we got nothing from their Coastal Restoration Fund, nothing from their Ocean Protection Plan. Mr. Speaker, I travelled throughout the riding. I went and saw the Shishat. I went to Hilliers and, and to uh, Nanus Bay, to Coombs, to Parksville, to Qualicum, to Bowser, to Denman Island, Hornby Island, to Royston, Union Bay, Cumberland, Courtney. And Mr. Speaker, when I went to the Qualicum Nation and all of these communities, they all had the same thing to, uh, to say. They felt that we'd been ignored. They felt that the government's pr priorities were completely out of order. And with that intervention, just said it all, Mr. Speaker, the government wants us to talk about an infrastructure bank in Asia, instead of here in Canada, and while well, people are suffering, living on mere existence, and, and they're being totally forgotten, and seniors are being neglected, and the lack of commitment from the government in my riding is clearly evident, where we have one of the highest poverty rates in the, in, in the country, the highest in British Columbia and the Alberta Valley, and a third of the children are living in care. Z &Z. Questions